When Russian steam rolled its way into Ukraine last February, it was supposed to be a pretty quick fight. They had a massive advantage, more manpower, more technology, more money, and more fighter jets, crucially. As the war began, Russia bombarded Ukraine with aerial attacks. It turns out that Ukraine has an ace up its sleeve changing what was supposed to be a short and brutal conflict into an eight-month struggle for survival. Tonight, we're going to show you one of the ways in which they've managed to change the momentum of this war. They've built an army of drones, tiny unmanned aerial vehicles and large attack drones that have given them the advantage and helped turn the tide of this war. It's only been through support of its allies, particularly in NATO, that Ukraine has managed to build what it now calls an army of drones. After the initial onslaught from Russia, Turkey stood up and delivered a shipment of Bayraktar TB2 drones to Ukraine. Pretty quickly after these Turkish-made drones arrived, messaging app Telegram lit up with visuals of Ukraine taking out Russian warships, supply boats, ammunition depots, and even recapturing Snake Island, the strategically important base in the Black Sea. As Ukraine started racking up wins with these TB2 Turkish-made drones, Russia started getting better at shooting them down. It became pretty clear pretty quickly to Ukraine that if they were going to retake the skies, they were going to need more drones, a lot more drones. So they came up with a pretty clever idea. Together, let's build an army of drones to help protect the people of Ukraine and to regain their peace and independence. So they put the call out to the international community, asking every foreign government, every association, business, and even individuals, if you can send us a drone, if it can fly, we'll take it. If you don't have a drone, send us the money and we'll buy it ourselves. I even got the chance to speak with one Ukrainian drone operator who was in Kiev just back from the front lines. He underscored just how critically important and strategically useful these drones were. When the project uh, Army of Drones started, they start to collect all drones, so what civil, uh, civilian people have in their houses and in their apartments. And they start buying a lot of drones from uh, other countries because they have a lot of donations. And they collected a lot of uh, really big Army of Drones. And now some drone and we need something, we just call. And next day they send us all of we want. You know, it's uh, it's great project. What are you able to do with this? You know, this this huge complement of drones that you wouldn't be able to do without them. You know, how has it really shaped Ukrainian uh, Ukraine's defenses? Russian troops can be two kilometers uh, in front of us or three kilometer kilometers. We start reconnaissance. We find and we start to use military drones with a bomb and. Uh, and we start to uh, um, hit them uh, as far as, as we can. They save a lot of lives of our soldiers because uh, Russians they use a lot of artillery, you know. And when they start to use artillery and in the sky, we can find their art artillery and we can send this information to Ukraine. Just days after we spoke, the Ukrainian armed forces mounted a surprise counteroffensive to the east of Kharkiv, recapturing over the course of several days and weeks thousands of kilometers of their territory, liberating dozens of towns. One thing our drone operator told me was that it will be critical for Ukraine to keep up these shipments of drones if it's going to continue forcing these counteroffensives. We actually got access to one delivery of Chinese-made surveillance drones earlier this month. These drones have been instrumental in giving Ukraine the advantage, the intelligence, the surveillance, and the capacity to take back that territory. But I wanted to get a sense of what the long-term impact of this drone warfare would be. So I called up Paul Lyshenko. He's a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, and he's a Ph.D. candidate at Cornell University. He's also written the book about drone warfare. So at the tactical level of war, drones, especially these easily um, weaponized, commercially available drones, have provided Ukraine the ability to exact surprise against Russian forces, which has allowed them to disrupt sort of Russian forces, operational tempo, uh, maneuver, and formation, and, and to destroy these forces 
at a scale probably would not have been achieved had drones not been integrated in the conflict. Many of those drones that Ukraine is deploying are commercial drones. I mean, some of them were literally donated by uh, regular folks in North America and Europe, drones you could have went and bought uh, at any electronics store. Ukraine has had to do this to gain parity with a larger scale military that by all accounts should have marched onto Kiev and installed a new regime. And by way of that, they have done things that have just kind of put uh, Russia in, in, in kind of on the back foot. In recent weeks, Russia has got back on the front foot, trying to beat Ukraine at their own game. Thanks to a number of Iranian-made kamikaze drones, Russia has been bombarding Ukrainian cities, particularly the capital of Kiev, basically with these flying bombs. The drone pilot I spoke to said it would be critical for these drones to continue arriving in Ukraine if they're hoping to keep up this pressure. But he also underscored just how important it was for Ukraine to use these drones to show the rest of the world the realities of this war. When you show it from the drone, they start, wow, it's really working good. We must donate and buy more, and they can crush more Russian base. I have some record from my military position when we drop the bomb on two Russian snipers, and uh, a security service sent me the voice message. Uh, they catch a voice message from a Russian soldier to his military leadership, and he and he says, "We are scared." I think in, uh, in, uh, mentally it's changed uh, some mind for Ukrainian people and Russians because Russians scare drones.